Um, no, no, uh, listen, please, for a second. If you are watching this when it first comes out on YouTube, I mean the minute it first comes out on Wednesday, September the 7th, 2022, then uh, hello, and it's very nice to talk to you, but I recommend you stop for a bit and go over to Apple's YouTube channel. Right now, I mean, seriously, this very moment, Apple is either still banging on about the new iPhone 14, or it's just finished just finished and you can play back the launch and see what they like actually let's, let's try to be useful here if you do happen to watch apple events on youtube and after they have streamed and you do it on a mac um you can hover your mouse over um what do you call this like the progress bar the timeline there uh, it's divided into chapters and you can get these segment titles if you hover over see what you're interested in click and skip to whatever you want to see and if what you want to see is immense technical detail if you want an examination of everything that's been launched or announced and the deeper meaning of it this isn't the place actually 58 keys you and me writers we talk about writing all that information is available though in like 11 billion other places including appleinsider.com and as you watch this if you're watching it the second it drops that's actually what I'm doing. I'll be writing for appleinsider.com and writing on uh, here in the UK. I'll be late into the night here. So I will be back as soon as humanly. Now she's going to be really late, haven't eaten. I'm going to be back as soon as humanely possible. That just popped into my head. Sorry. Um, I'll be back with a new 58 keys, an extra 58 keys. That's specifically about what I think, what, what I believe I've seen Apple's announcement means for you and me as writers. If it means anything at all yeah. um, and in the meantime apple has now definitely launched the iphone 14 and you and i definitely do not have one so let me show you five ish things you can do to buy a new iphone 14 given that we are writers and given that that means we're on a budget Hello, I'm William Gallagher and this is 58 Keys, which as ever, as always, is for writers like you and me who use and who write on, well, Macs, but also iPhones and iPads. Uh, do subscribe because you just, there's always so much to talk about, isn't there? And maybe particularly now around the launch of new devices. But this time, actually, this is about basically buying the iPhone 14 for less where possible. But all of this it comes with an asterisk or a footnote and together those go like this of the five ish things i want to show you and make sure you know about if you don't already i have done three i do not have any personal experience of the last two i'm going to tell you about and those could well be the best for you so while i like that we get to talk like this you and me writer to writer once we're done i ask that you go research the details of anything you're I mean, I know you, of course you will. I know you will, but I just, I can't not say it. I loathe the idea of giving you even the slightest steer in the wrong direction. But now, five ways to sort of save money buying the iPhone 14. And I'll tell you now, some of this is really quick. Some of it isn't. You can save the most money by not buying an iPhone 14 at all. I should say, by the way, there is a linked 58 Keys episode below which covers how to choose the right iPhone for you, whether you're buying today, tonight, or, or ever, really. But certainly always one option is to not buy. If you don't have an iPhone already, then actually I do, I hugely recommend them. But if you have, it's at least likely that your iPhone is fine and it's probably pretty great. So you could stick with what you've got. And that's the first of the, I've uh, just thought of another one. Uh, all right, can we call this 1A? You could buy any iPhone other than the new iPhone 14. As I say, Apple is talking about this right now. So I don't know the specifics as, as you and I talk here, but what typically happens every year is that Apple launches the new one, but it keeps selling last year's iPhone and quite often the year before's as well. Those older iPhones, they're very good and they should see a price cut. Although, the, you know, this is Apple. It's not going to get cut by very much. But um, if you do uh, decide to, if you do look at buying an iPhone 13 or iPhone 12, well, actually look first at the Pro model. So the iPhone 13 Pro, which is what I have now, or the iPhone 12 Pro, which is actually what I had 
before. There are bigger iPhones like the iPhone 12 Pro Max and there, there may, may be che the cheaper or the non Pro versions. Apple doesn't necessarily keep selling all varieties once an iPhone is no longer this year's new model. But anyway, overall, the Pro models tend to be the best long term value. Nuts. 1B. This is going to take a while, isn't it? If you're going to buy anything other than the new iPhone 14, make sure you also look at Apple's refurb store. Links for the US and the UK ones in the description below. Yes. But um, all countries where uh, Apple operates, it also operates a refurb store. And actually, there are lots of details about this little nooks and crannies about it in the 58 keys about buying the right iPhone. But in brief, bargains. Enough. Number two. Number two is also quick to describe. You could just buy an iPhone 14. No messing. Buy it outright or via carrier, contracts, anything you like. Just buy it. It's not going to be the cheapest thing you can do. That is precisely the opposite of not buying it, isn't it? But it is an option. Um, if you're in the States, by the way, and you have an Apple card, there are options to buy an iPhone through it in installments. I'm in the UK, though, where the Apple card is, is still not available several years in. So I'm, I'm not even going to try telling you how to do that. Trade in your old iPhone with Apple. There are others, but look at Apple first. When you go to buy a new iPhone 14 now, for Apple's sales page is actually going to prompt you to trade in your current or or an older iPhone. It's right there. It's part of the buying process. And Apple actually makes it remarkably simple to do. They're, like I said, they're not the only people doing this, and we need to talk about that, but Apple does it, well, in the Apple way, doesn't it? Very smooth, very easy. There you are. You're at the buy page. You're about to plonk down your cash. Apple prompts you to, it prompts you to train. Actually, more than that, kind of nudges you. Um, it tempts you, really. That's what it does. It says things like, get $25 to $600 credit towards your new iPhone. Or here, where I am in the UK, it says, right now, uh, £30 to £470. You'd better believe there are terms and conditions, but those are tempting numbers. So, say you go for this, right? Apple's online store will then ask you four things. First, which iPhone have you got? What model iPhone is it you want to trade in? And there's a drop down list showing a bunch of them. Then how big is its storage? What's its capacity? If you don't know, by the way, go to, uh, actually, no, nope, Apple tells you this right there too. Go to settings on your iPhone, choose general, then choose about, and there you go, there's the information. Next question, is the iPhone in good condition? Yes or no? There's actually, there's a long list there of what good condition actually means but I think you can work it out. Once you've answered these three questions you are then shown an estimated trade-in value. It's always going to be less than you hope but if it's good enough for you if yeah you'll take that then fourth part you're asked for your old iPhone's serial number and again Apple tells you how to find that incomprehensible string of letters. Nicely by the way this isn't said by Apple but if you go to settings general about and find that serial number, you can press and hold on that number to just copy it. And then you can go back to this page and you can paste the serial number into the, the box there and away off you go. But this is important. Right now, at this stage, when you're going through the process of buying a new iPhone, Apple will charge you the full cost of the new iPhone 14. Doesn't matter whether it says you get $25 off or £470. You do not. Not right now. Not at this point. It's the full cost straight away. So you need to have that full amount in your bank account available or in your credit card, what, whatever it is. So you buy the new iPhone 14, full cost. Apple ships it out to you. It's all very nice and lovely. And separately, Apple also ships out to you an empty box. Uh, make sure you've wiped your old iPhone. That sounds like, I mean, give it a rub, which isn't a bad idea, I suppose. But, you know, I mean, erase all the data and things. Um, and clean it might be, might, yeah. Um, then use Apple's empty box to ship your old iPhone back to Apple. It goes back to them. They check it out. And then they credit you with whatever trade-in amount they then decide. Now, hopefully... 
that's the same that they quoted online. But if the yeah, if you fudged it a bit and the phone isn't quite in good condition, you will get less. And I, I don't think that there's anything you can do about this. Not at this stage, not when you got through this part of the process. If you don't like what they offer, tough. So maybe it's a bit of a gamble, maybe, but I've traded in at least two iPhones over the years, and each time I've got exactly what they quoted online. In fact, actually, I did uh, Apple Watch once and again. Same thing, exactly what they said. Good condition, this amount, that's what I got. It was very useful. As I said, Apple, I mean, you know this already, you can guess this if you didn't. It's not the only firm that will take your old iPhone for money. I haven't used anywhere else, so seriously, look into this before you do. I mean, I don't want to sound alarming or patronize anything. It's not like I think you'll get ripped off or that you don't know this, but iPhones are expensive. Uh, shock. Yeah, you know, you're surprised at the quality of information you're getting here. Trading values, resale values, they can be hundreds of pounds of dollars. So of course, you've got to be careful who you do it. One thing that actually that I just learned looking into this for you is that one of the best known companies in America for this has finally come here to where I am in the UK, Gazelle. It's been around for years and years in the States, but the last time I looked, was it last year, the year before? It just, it wasn't here and now it is. So thank you very much. If I do go for an iPhone 14, I will now schlep through Gazelle to see what I could get for my iPhone 13 Pro. And obviously I have to check it out. And right now it says I can get 480 pounds but these figures vary depending on when you do things. I'll more to say about that in a minute. There are also plenty of other third-party firms doing it, but really they all ask you similar questions to Apple and then they calculate a figure based on your answers and what it's worth to them. In this case, when it's not Apple, you're not trading in your old iPhone, you're selling it to them and then this is the price that they will pay you. Um, again, I haven't done this, so I don't know how well it works or how easily, but Gazelle and presumably others, they don't do this thing of shipping you out an empty box and getting you to send in their old iPhone. The Gazelle wants you to go to what they call an Eco ATM. It's a vending machine, except, you know, instead of getting chocolate out, you put your iPhone in. I think I prefer the chocolate. Thing. Um, Gazelle says, though, you'll get paid instantly. Pop the phone into the Eco ATM and you get, well, it's very confusing to me, but you get paid both by PayPal and your own bank. Not clear how it works or whether it varies. But anyway. um, I also, I don't know how many other firms do it this way or take in any trade in or cash values. At least in the States though, cell phone carriers, your Verizons and Sprints, they sometimes, at least sometimes have trade in deals. Plus, um, there are high street stores in various places that you can walk into and sell your iPhone there. Just know that whatever you do, you're always going to get less than you hope, but it can still be a significant amount, whether you're selling to a third party or trading it in while with Apple. And when it's that significant, the money you get can be the difference between an iPhone 14 being incredibly costly or the iPhone 14 being incredibly costly, but manageable. One last full option, although again, I haven't done this all myself. Apple operates what it calls an iPhone upgrade program. If you are eligible, which basically, I mean, there's more to it, but it's really just is your credit score okay? Then you can get an iPhone by paying a monthly fee for it instead of buying one outright. And I know that sounds instantly the same as going via any installment plan, financier, carrier, but there is a significant difference with Apple. Strictly speaking, right, what you're doing with Apple is you are agreeing to pay them monthly for two years. But after the first, as after one year, you can then elect to switch to the then new iPhone. So if you went on the program right now in order to get the iPhone 14, then next year, 2023, you could switch straight to the iPhone 15. Well, I'll say straight. Apparently it's uninterrupted. It is simple. Reportedly it's a doddle really, but I haven't done it. So I don't know what happens. I don't know what happens if say right now you have a regular iPhone 14, but next year you want the iPhone 15 Pro Max or whatever it's called. You definitely can do it. I just don't know how you can switch phones. In fact, actually you will switch phones. The reason to get on the program is to keep switching to the new iPhone. 
And all that it happens contractually, all it means is that your two year agreement resets. So right now you agreed to pay for the iPhone 14 for two years. Then halfway through, you switch to the iPhone 15, and now your agreement is to pay monthly for that iPhone 15 for the next two years. And then iPhone 16, yeah, as long as you keep doing it. Um, one uh, small but important thing, Apple operates this iPhone upgrade program in very many countries, but not all. It does include the US and the UK, most major markets, but it isn't all of them. And actually, in none of the countries that it covers, is it really just Apple you're dealing with? It's Apple plus some probably local finance company, regional finance company. And it's a different finance company in most of these countries, which means there are tiny little differences in the procedures, in the terms and the conditions in every country. So read the small print. Okay. Links for the, the US and the UK versions are in the description below. Um, I have been trying to absolutely confirm that you can join the upgrade program and at the same time get on it cheaper by trading in your current iPhone. The UK Apple Store says yes, the US one goes, mm, doesn't really mention it. So if you do look into this, I suggest the best thing is go to your local Apple Store, ask them about trading in on the iPhone upgrade program. I actually suspect though, that since the program charges you monthly, the saving that you'll see per month may not be that gigantic. We, I mean, it adds up, doesn't it? It's a saving over the time. Yeah, but it does bring me to one other option I'd like you to consider. So not one of the five I was planning, or five and one A, one B. It's just as an extra one, but it's just a small extra final thought, if I may. So this extra something, this, this final thought. When you go, if you go for Apple's trade-in and they send you that box to ship back your old iPhone to them, you don't have to do it. I mean, well, you, obviously you do if you want the money, if you want the trade-in discount, but you're not in any way contractually ob obligated to do it. Not, not at this point, not yet, not until you do actually send it back to them. And you might want to think about it. Some years ago, right, um, I had a calamitous failure with my iPhone 5. It just imploded. And actually, I had to just, there was no option. I had to go buy an iPhone 6 and I didn't even want to, but it was required. Today, if that kind of thing happens, well, no. If my iPhone 13 Pro dies, I mean, I know it's unlikely, but it happened once. If it happens again, well, then actually I can swap to an old iPhone SE I've kept. I can swap over in moments. Uh, what I've got is a spare going, if you like, is a second generation iPhone SE, and I don't actually think it's it's very good at all. I think the third generation, the current iPhone SE is better, but it's, it's an iPhone and it's right there. Swap over to it straight away. The reason that it's right there though, is that I chosen, eventually chose not to trade it in. And actually I swapped it. This is a different story, but okay. I was in the process of buying the iPhone 13 Pro, right? And I was looking at the trade-in value of my then iPhone 12 Pro. And as good a trade-in value as it was, I was looking at it when the box, I realized that if I ever needed to buy an iPhone 12 again, I would never get it for that kind of trade-in price. Whatever I got from Apple then, whatever money they gave me off, I would have to pay much more if I ever, for whatever reason, wanted to buy an iPhone 12 Pro again. And there are reasons to. I like having my new iPhone and my previous one. I used to use two for this, actually, if you're talking to you, at 58 keys and still sometimes do. The cameras are good. I like having a spare. And I also like having a spare in case of problems. The, the benefit of that is huge. But as it happens, last year I didn't trade in, I swapped. I gave my iPhone 12 Pro to my wife instead of trading it in. I gave her the iPhone 12 Pro. She gave me her iPhone SE. One of us did really well out, out, of, out of that. Mm. I'm still thinking about that. As I keep saying this time, when this 58 Keys video first goes out, Apple is even now banging on about the new iPhone 14 and its wonderfulness. Oh, well, actually, I've talked quite a bit, haven't I? Maybe they finished by now. But this time, this time of year, if you like, uh, this is actually the second best time to try any of this selling or trading in your iPhone. The very best time, sorry, 
was last week. If you can sell your old iPhone before the new one is announced, that's when you get the best price in the year. Um, in the US, I have read that what you can do is sell it, but lock in the price. So you make the deal, but somehow you still get to hang on to the old iPhone until the new one is out. And I don't know how that, that works, but it sounds very nice if you can do it. The second best time to sell is now, right here. When Apple has announced the, iPhone, the new iPhone, but it isn't actually shipping yet. It's not on sale. Yet. You can't go out and buy it. In that window, that's the second best time because then the worst time to sell is once the new iPhone is on sale, is available. It's the worst time because, well, that's when everyone who hasn't got around to thinking about it before and is now going to sell, hasn't already, that's when they're going to go trying to sell it. So supply goes up, prices go down. Look, price is always important. Seriously, the quality of information. iPhones are never cheap. Today, though, I mean, here in the UK, the economy is frightening here. As you and I talk right now, I suspect, I strongly suspect, I'm not going to upgrade to an iPhone 14, and especially when I so relish my iPhone 13 Pro. But you also know that Apple, they're going to make the phone sound irresistible in the next 58 keys, which will be linked below and hopefully will be out as soon as I can possibly get it to you. I will try to resist the glitz and the glamour and, and look really carefully at what specific benefits the new iPhone and presumably the new Apple Watch that's out as well, anything else, what they give you and me as writers. If nothing, I will always recommend an iPhone to a writer. I think these machines have been extraordinary aid to my, my really to my writing business. But let's see if Apple has added anything or improved anything, taking anything away, I don't know. Enough to make a difference for us as writers. Hopefully we'll find out soon. And that's it for this 58 Keys. Thank you very much for watching. Now, take care of yourself, write more, check out Apple's iPhone 14 launch video thingy. It's going to be a really good production and I will see you as soon as I can.